Okay, my, uh, my camera paused there. It said reached size limit and it's only half an hour. I don't know what that's about. Like, so I'm gonna have to do the upload these videos in half hour episodes, basically. <laughs> right. Sorry about that, guys. I normally do. It normally does an hour recording and it goes off. Like, but anyhow, I'm. So, I'm. Um, I'm getting suspicious about this bad vibe anyway, continuing from the last half hour, like 35 minutes, whatever it was. Um, I start getting this bad vibe, right, in my pad, yeah? And then by, by chance, either the neighbour complains about my water leaking down below, or my water blocked up, I can't remember what it was. So what I had to do was, was remove the... panel off the side of the bath only to check the plug hole and everything and the plumbing basically so I unplug you know it takes the screws out and everything and looks under the bath and lo and behold in the space underneath the bath which is quite a large space if you know what I mean the bath was sort of raised off the ground on these like legs so there's a little gap under the bath and you know when I say I checked every cupboard and everything like, and you know I didn't find anything like. But so what? Do, I, I, I see this this little collective of little items. It was like a bit of witchcraft, if you know what I mean. There was no voodoo dolls there, right, guys? But guess what I found? There was a like a a plastic bo bottle that you get like um, shampoo in or something. Right, you know, air, pockets of air, if you know what I'm saying, Satan rules the air, you know, footballs, car tyres, empty bottles, with the t with, it had the top on, you know, it was like a Revlon or something, or Sun Silk or something, you know, like a bottle conditioner or shampoo or something, right? Um, a little cardboard box, about so big, for something else, some, some other bathroom product, right? Now, this is the crazy thing. They couldn't have fell down there by accident. They couldn't have been sort of just brushed there. Or someone would have had to have consciously removed the panel from the side of the bath and put these things there as a kind of spell, a bit of voodoo maybe, yeah. And then, so it's like a, an empty bottle, a little empty box, right? Think about it, boxes, bottles. They're using the, you know, the... the it, we're bordering on the, the realms of black magic and supernatural here guys because that area while the panel was on there'd be no light shining in whatsoever and my bathroom didn't have windows you know because it was in a block of flats there was no windows in the bathroom at all so it was guaranteed a dark room when the light was switched off and especially under the bath there was not going to be any light getting through whatsoever right so just by chance i just Checking underneath the bath, so I find these two bottles, and guess what else I found? <laughs> two used condoms. Right, not fresh condom. You know what condoms are? You know we we call them tonkies, contraceptives, rubbers in America. You go, you know, rubbers. Two rubbers. <laughs> I can't, I can't stay serious talking about that, like. Two tonkies, right? Two condoms. And they were green. You know, I've never... I've sort of... You know, like, like a while back, they, they had this big mad phase where everyone was getting into sex parties and everything, or like, you know, the three... Remember what I'm talking about? Threesomes, you know, like, these, these, these characters were into this, like... I thought they were trying to bring me into the triangle of sex or something, or like, you know, sort of try and find out if I was interested in that kind of thing, like, Roman orgies, you know what I mean? Two men and a chick, like, maybe, I don't know, maybe two, maybe three men, maybe <laughs> three women, maybe two women and one man. That's not so bad, I suppose. <laughs> I'm joking. But anyway, these two condoms, right? I thought they were like, you know, they were just like, um, you know, like when you're a kid and you mess around with condoms, you blow them up like a balloon and you, you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> loads of people have done that kind of thing, like. But the two condoms, they were distinctive because they were green, like a dark emerald green colour, right? I assume they were probably flavoured when they were brand new. 
know what they call flavoured condoms and that, like, probably mint, <laughs> probably mint flavour, like, I'm doing me Columbo detective work here, man, and, so they were that old, right, and, you know, when, you, when you've used a condom and you tie a knot in them, Whoever it was put them there, and I don't know whether it had been a male or a female, I, I, probably it was all the signs of witchcraft to me, like it was all the signs of, say, say the, the the man had said to the woman, oh, I can't be bothered going to, you know, after the, while they're having sex in a threesome, or maybe, maybe it's just two of them, I don't know, but remember what I'm trying to tell you here, guys, they knew about the inside of that flat, the wallpaper, the mirror, or whatever, like, so they were familiar with the, with the actual apartments basically but it's like maybe they were doing something like having a little bit of a fling in the bedroom you know on, on, on drugs or something I don't know having a bit of a mad one like and the, and the guy said to the girl like tie a knot in the t in the condoms like a balloon like you know what I mean with the sperm in them right guys think about it. DNA swabs samples saliva sperm <laughs> sperm trapped in a condom it's as though they've said to the girl, flush them down the toilet or something, right? And instead of, like, obliging the wishes of the what they say, she's, um, she's tied the knot in the condoms or whatever, and she's hid them maybe in the cardboard box or something, or, you know, so that they, they, they thought she'd flush them down the toilet. And then while the back's turned, she's removed the foot, the bath tub, uh, the, the the panel from the side of the bath, and put the condoms under there with the knot still tied. So think about it, there were two condoms. It could have been instead of like you know in, in the normal world you'd have like one guy and one woman, wouldn't you? You know what I mean? There could have been the sperm of two separate men in two separate condoms. You know, because they obviously both blew the load, you know, the safe sex and all that stuff, like, you know, whatever they get up to, like, you know, they could have been buggering each other, they could have been, I don't know, I don't even want to go there, like, right, guys, yeah, but, if you just imagine what happens between, like, some people, maybe, it was, I, I, to me, my own, my own intuition, my sort of psychic kind of, I was sort of thinking, this is the signs of a threesome, and the chick has kept the condoms sealed with the sperm in them, like, and hid them under the bath and put the panel on. So it's like a spell, like keeping your locker here. But it's even worse, isn't it, guys? If you were the guy out there, if you were the men, and you were wondering, why have I got this hold over me? I can't understand it, like. And you, you, don't, you haven't got a clue that your sperm is still under this bathtub. Out of sight, hidden from everyone. Trapped in a condom. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like that, trying to get out. Help! <laughs> I'm trapped in a condom. Like your spirits in a way. It's witchcraft, isn't it? It's witchcraft, right? Like gang stalkers, they're all witches, basically. Usually, anyway, from what I can gather, they're usually into voodoo or witchcraft. Or that kind of gang mentality, you know, like the Hells Angels or all that stuff, like. So, what was weird was... Right. This is like... <laughs> I know this sounds crazy, like, you know what I mean? But I went like, they, they were so old, right? The condoms were so old that, you know, because I thought, in my mind, I thought, oh, look, someone just, like, threw a couple of condoms under there. Like, they, you wouldn't, I wouldn't have thought in a million years they might have been used. Do you understand? Because everyone puts used condoms in a toilet, don't they? You know what I mean? Or flush them down the toilet or in the bin or whatever. No one wants to preserve condoms that have been used. And who would, in the right mind, would want to do that unless they're a witch? You know, <laughs> but this girl seems to have control over these two men, if you understand what I'm saying. And she was spying on me, trying to stir them up into violently attacking me, as you get me, right? Now, I'm not being paranoid, guys, because I'll tell you more in a minute, like, about someone else having a go at me in the same block of flats. He wasn't even connected to those two men, but he'd been in jail, Right? But anyway, do these condoms, I, I grabbed the box and I grabbed the plastic bottle in the box and sort of moved it and thought, what's, what's that like? And I've seen the condoms, it's, Egh. 
But, like, they were so old, right, guys? When I tried to pick them up, you know, like, carefully pick them up, and they just, it just, like, fell into pieces. Do you know, like, dust? Like, it went from, like, green rubber into, like, you know, like when paint dries on a wall and it just crisps off the wall. <laughs> they were like crispy condoms, basically. <laughs> and all the sperm had long since evaporated or something, I don't know. <laughs> Casper, the friendly ghost or something. <laughs> I'm not, honestly, guys, I, I'm not lying. I'm not, you know, I'm not exaggerating. No, this is not a word of a lie. All this is all completely true, you know what I mean? People want me to, like, you know, hold the Bible and, you know testify to this like you know but so you see what i'm saying and i'm sure that woman right was responsible because this is the proof that i know it was it something to do with it i can't imagine how long they were there for the condoms like but she had these two guys bouncing off each other and sort of trying to get them to attack me you know like you know what it reminds me of you know when you watch madonna in concerts and she has like the old not all britney spears or people like that them women singers they're like they're just monarch programmed they always have two men dancing don't they do you know what I mean? If not, like, ten men or a hundred men on the stage, like, well, they always have a couple of knobhead guys, like, slaves, going, you know, doing silly moves, dancing, like, total fucking titheads in front of them, like, you know, like, stupid, ridiculous, like, they'd be, like, muscle men as well, won't they? They'd be well-built with all, like, the six-pack and everything and the muscles and that, like, but they just look like a pair of fannies, like, dancing for a woman, singing stupid songs, like... Well, this is what this girl seems to be doing. She seems to be playing men off against each other. Right. So anyway, I carefully removed these tonkies. And they just disintegrated. Like, you know, like this green dust kind of thing. It was just like falling apart. I was like, oh man, I had to brush it up and that. And then put it, you know, throw it down the toilet. So I was basically breaking a spell. But remember, I didn't do it on purpose, guys. It was accidental. I found them by accident. But I would never have known they were there. If it didn't, by chance, you know, have a leak or whatever it was that made me thingy. So, I got rid of all of that. And then I put the panel back on the bath and that, like, put the screws back in and that. And I was thinking, there's no, look, there's no way that could have fell there by accident. No way in a million years. That had to have been put there. Like putting pins in a voodoo doll. But she, what she's done is she's kept the sperm in the, in the tonkeys and put them under the, out of sight in the darkness. She must have been a fucking witch, basically, mustn't she? Right, and then, but after I first met them, right, you know, after I first met this girl with her actual boyfriend, I went into their house, into their flat, and we were sitting there having a talk, having a couple of beers and that, like, and you know what she said, no, like, when a woman tries to belittle her boyfriend, not the gay fella, her boyfriend fella, you know, remember, there's three of them together sort of thing, but the, she's not letting on, is she, what she's doing between everyone, if you know what I mean? We're sitting there drinking and having a laugh, and the you know the scouse lad, her boyfriend, was just like, eh, and she goes like, she she picks up a packet of condoms and she goes, hey, look, these are his condoms. What he uses, you know, joking, just a little sort of nod and a wink kind of thing, like you know, a little bit of banter, like. And she goes, look what he likes these, the the, the mint. I call him Minty. I call him Minty. That's my nickname for him because he likes mint condoms, you no know, mint flavored condoms. <laughs> So I was like, oh my word, when I found them condoms under me bath, I was thinking, this this can only be something to do with them, can't it? Or here, right? It's like, they, like they've been living there for like centuries or something, maybe, there's some kind of like witch's fucking coven or something like. This was a modern block of flats, actually, you know, well, built in the 60s. And then the other guy giving the game away, saying he probably wallpapered me living room. Do you know when you put two and two together, you think, hang on, they've occupied this flat and they've got some kind of hold over it, like, right. So as soon as I realised that, you know why people say, like, I remember when I was a child, one of the kids saying to me, you should never smash a mirror, because, you know, we found a, a mirror in it, you know, like, dumped them and we smashed it with, a bri with bricks or whatever, and this kid was going, you get seven years bad luck for doing that now. Now, superstition is superstition. It's witchcraft, isn't it? It's like trying to put you off, do something confidently. Right. So I was, I was thinking, hang on. The mirror's a source and the condom's a source. 
that's the source of the witchcraft, right? I eventually went into that guy's flat who was a bisexual, and he had a crystal ball on his fucking... Like a really naff crystal ball with loads of bubbles in it, like, do you get me? Like, I, I can't... I don't want to go too deeply into that right now, because we've got other things to talk about, right? But there's a link to crystal, glass, condoms, <laughs> air, pockets of air, witchcraft. So I smashed this... I actually smashed the mirror. I went into the bathroom, pulled it off the wall. And the uncles I lived on the seventh floor. And behind the block of flats, it was like a car park. And I was a bit off my head at the time. Like, it was just a kind of um, anti-witch kind of... I've, I've sort of flipped that thing. And I know I'm no witch putting any spells on me. Do you know what I mean? Because they were trying to kill me. They were, she was kept constantly trying to get people to beat me up and stuff like it while I was living there, like... So I went straight in the bathroom and pulled this fucking mirror off the wall. It was just stuck on with, like, sticky double-sided tape. Just went straight to me veranda and just threw the mirror off the veranda. What's it called? Smash! And I was thinking, I don't care if I get seven years bad luck. That's a load of crap, isn't it? When people warn you like that, it's superstition. They're trying to... It's so you don't break the spell, isn't it? Do you get me? You know, if you say you... If you go into a house and there's a mirror there when you move in... I mean, watch the film Paranormal Activity, and and um, I know it's only a film, right, guys? But what's what, what's the like the a major factor in the whole film? She keeps go, they keep going in the bathroom, and there's like these mirrors everywhere, isn't there? You know what I mean? There's they use mirrors, but I suppose we poltergeists or ghosts, but they could just be like dodgy spirits, you know? It's just witchcraft, basically, like. So anyway, I smashed that mirror. As if to say, get rid of every connection to this person whatsoever, like, inside my flat where I'm living, you know, while I'm living here, I am in control. Right, I got rid of the tonkeys from under the bath, <laughs> and and sure enough, the energy, the negative energy that I was feeling in the place disappeared. You know, it all sort of went like, but and I sort of carried on like. And then another episode, like, and another... You know, this is like the target, this is what I'm saying, like, like targeted individual thing, the gang stalkers, they work together and they use witchcraft, basically. There's always a witch or a wizard who's running the show. And this is how I can prove it, like. There's one of the other neighbours who lived on the same floor. I won't name any names, anything like that. I didn't want to talk about this publicly because I don't want to get this person into trouble, right? Because... He was a victim himself, if you know what I mean. He'd been in jail he'd, for petty crimes and that. Like he was a bit of a mad lad, like myself. But he'd actually been in jail, and you know, at Her Majesty's leisure, remember. So he's obviously tagged. You know what I mean? Where when I say tagged, like they, they still keep an eye on you in the in the civilian world. You know, in case you get into, in case you do anything naughty again, like. But it's a, it's a degree of mind control, though, isn't it? And um, this lad, I was actually friends with him. He was all right with me. You know me. We used to smoke weed together and have a drink together and that like. And um, I had no problems with him. I actually liked him. Like no problems with him. Like. And he knocks on the door one day, and he was known to do drugs. Right, he was known to get into his drugs. He'd do a bit of <laughs> bit of coke or whatever. Like you know, just it was just the usual in the area. You know what I mean? But. The scouse lad who lived with that bird whose condoms are found under me bathtub. He he told me about this other this this lad who's who I'm talking about now. He said, You don't wanna be they always had this thing about like you you know, you don't wanna be talking to them because they're trouble or you don't wanna be talking to them because they're a right nasty piece of work. And you think, how do you know you know what I mean, how do you know unless what well, like it, unless you've got some degree of control going on or something or a game going on between his like but he said the same thing about this lad. He's like, oh, I know him, you know, from when I was inside. I met him in jail or something like that. He's like, and he's a bit of a psycho, you know. You've got to be careful with him. He's a psycho. And I'm like, look, man, I, I've, I've been battered by gangs. I've had all kinds of stuff done to me. I don't really care, like, you know what I mean? But anyway, sure enough, this lad who's he's my neighbour, like, he, he asks me if I want to buy a television off him. Right? And I said, yeah, all right, if you're selling it, like, cheap and that. And he's like, and I said, I don't get paid till next week, so I'll pay you next week, you know what I mean? And he goes, all right, sound, you know, proper being sound, no arguments, nothing like that. So he gives me the telly, brings it into me flat and put, you know what I mean? You have to put an item in your pad, do you understand? 
he puts the item in my pad, which is an excuse to have a go at me, if you know what I mean. Puts the telly in my pad and says, all right, as long as you pay me next week, then, yeah, sound like. And I'm like, oh, nice one, yeah. And then, a couple of nights later, I'm sitting down watching the telly. Right, because back then I used to watch the television. I'm sitting there watching the telly, and bear in mind that woman and that other fella, the way they like know all the moves of everyone, controlling the brains, if you know what I mean. I'm just peacefully watching the telly. I even had a smoke of weed that was that laid back, you know what I mean? I was like, <sighs> just knowing you're like that, you're most vulnerable. You know, when you smoke weed, it makes you kind of like Dylan the rabbit, you know, where you're like too peaceful kind of thing. You're not a aggressive enough and like. I'm sitting there watching the telly like that. Next thing, you know, me, me secret doorbell goes off. So I get up and think, well, I'll just open the door. It's got to be someone I know, isn't it? I opens the door. <laughs> Straight away, the neighbour, the neighbour, the young lad who's, who's gave me the telly, he barges in at me holding a, co a kitchen knife. Right? You know, a, 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 you know, a carving knife, kitchen knife. He comes straight in, you no, know, like caught, caught me completely off guard. I'm completely surprised that he's even like knocking on my door at that time. Like, barges in with this knife, and he's like holding me throat, and he's like, "You're, you're, you're winding me up, you aren't yet." And like, completely off his fucking rocker. Like, I'd never seen him like that. You know what I mean? I was used to seeing him dead sound and that, like. Like a proper psycho, just like that other neighbour said, he's a bit of a psycho, you want to watch him, you know, like, as though they knew it, they were controlling him, do you know what I mean? And he comes in at me with this knife, right, he's holding me, he gets hold of me throat, he's got a knife at me throat like that, going, you fucking, you're, you're fucking winding me up. Sorry about my language, guys, but this is the reality of it, this is how it was, do you know what I mean? He's like, you're winding me up, aren't you? You're not going to pay for that, telly, are you? You fucking just, you ain't going to pay for that, were you? And I'm like, calm down. I didn't want to hit him. I didn't want to lose me temper. You know, like what I'm saying? But like, you, you got to stay cool. And this was severe, guys. This was a knife being held at me throat, right? I'm like, calm down. Because if I'd have hit him, I'd have battered him, to be honest. I was much harder than him. I'm not boasting or not. And I was bigger than him. And I could have just wasted them, like... But I like to find out what the core is, what the source is, like, you know, what we call the source, like the condoms under the bath or whatever, yeah. So I was like, calm down, man, calm down, let's talk about this, what's wrong, like, you know what I mean? And he's going, you fucking know what I mean, and he just wasn't listening to me. Then he actually holds the knife into me stomach, you know, he's, the point of the knife is literally ready to burst into me gut, like, then he puts it back at me neck. And honestly, man, I could feel the blade of the knife on my neck there like that. And I still stayed calm. I didn't actually lose my temper. Because I was thinking, I want to know who's fucking pulling his strings here, man. And it was obvious, isn't it? If you know what I mean from what I've told you already. So he's got the knife like that on my neck. And, I, and he was holding my neck so hard, I nearly blacked out. You know, you know, you know. So you see what I'm saying? When I say gang stalking, guys, I haven't just been gang stalked or where it's like just words or trigger words. I've actually been physically attacked as well. Do you understand? And he's got me. He's got his hand on me neck. I nearly blacked out. I had to sort of go, whoa, hang on. He's, you know, when you get strangled, you you choke to death, basically. You know what I mean? I nearly blacked out with asphyx asphyxiation, and I had to sort of push him back towards the front door. And I didn't, still didn't want to hit him, you see. And then he had the knife like that in my neck still. And then what I did was to try and sort of like throw him off his thinking. I just grabbed hold of the blade of the knife. Right, so I didn't want to hit him. I didn't want to physically... Because if I lose my temper, I go bonkers, guys. You know what I mean? I'm, I'm proper violent if I lose my temper. But just doing my best to stay calm. Because I'm trying to psych him out, trying to find out what the fuck's getting into him. He's been in jail, remember? He's marked by the Queen and all the rest of it, right? So I grabbed hold of the blade, you know, the actual blade of his knife. And it was like, you know, when you do an arm wrestle where you sort of... He's like that, pushing like that. And I'm like that, and we're just staring in each other's eyes. You can imagine how intense it is, like. So I'm pushing the knife back like that, holding onto this blade, right? And he's still psycho. He's still looking at me like that, like. Next thing, because I was holding the blade, I, me, me thumb cuts. I've still got the scar there. I've got a little scar on me thumb. But you can see it, like. You can see the scar there. Next thing, a load of blood just goes. Poof, 
and starts running down my arm. Right? He sees the blood running down my arm. And I'm not kidding you guys, as soon as he saw the blood, it was like the spell, he snapped out, he went. It was as like someone went abracadabra. He saw blood running down my arm. And he looked, and he just went. He looks at the knife, as if he's like just, as if it was as if he was sleepwalking. It was as if he was sleepwalking, that's the only way. I wouldn't have found, if I had kicked off on him or violently attacked him, I would never have seen any of this. This is why it's crucial, you've got to stay calm, you know what I mean? He, he, he looks at the knife, it's got blood on it, he looks at my arm, and then he starts going, Oh, Bruce, Bruce, man, what have I done? Oh, man, what have I done to you, man? Oh, man, have I hit you, have I hit you? And he's like, he goes, runs into my kitchen, he gets, a, you know, one of you know, the tea towel off me, off me sink, and he starts, like, wiping the blood, going, Are you okay? Put a blaster on it. Are you okay? And, like, proper caring, and, like, like he was, like, like he was, like he was, like, really angry with himself that he'd done such a thing, do you know what I mean? He didn't, like, he just did, you know, and it was all the signs to me of mind control. I was like, whoa, I've just seen the most weirdest thing there, man. He was, like, a psychopath one minute that would have stuck the knife in me neck. And all of a sudden, he's like an angel going, are you okay, Bruce, is everything all right? Oh, man, I didn't, oh, man, I, I'm sorry about that, I'm sorry about that, don't tell anyone, don't tell anyone. Like, he was almost crying. He, he was he was actually shedding tears, basically, really. Like He was like, what have I done, what have I done, Bruce, Bruce, please? You know, and I was like, look, man, calm down, it's okay, don't worry about it, like. I was like, but what the fucking hell got into you, like? You know, what on earth got into you? I said, you know damn well I was going to pay for the telly, you should know that, like. And he went, and his own, this is in his own words, guys, not mine. He goes, someone must have slipped me a pipe of crack or something. You know what I mean? And he must have had a toke of weed somewhere or a smoke a pot. And they've spiked him with crack to make him lose his temper the next day. You know, make him violent. Do you get me, like? So this is where the drugs ties in, you see. You know, cocaine, you know, cocaine. I mean, any cocaine-based drug, guys, it's got a, it's a serpentine creature that runs the show.